What makes a good biography? Now I have a list here of some 30 biographies. And amongst them, well, you have such a wide variety to choose from. Now, it can be a biography from long ago, such as the Paxton Letters, where a wife back on the home estate writes down to her husband on a business trip down in London to center several L's of fabric and some ice and, uh, pardon me, pike and axe heads, to which they will put staves and make weapons. Doubtedly, she had a little trouble at home. Um, it could be someone famous. We have mortality, as Christopher Hitchens faces his inevitable death from cancer. Um, it could be a joyous one, such as Coming Up Trumps, from Gene Trumpington. It could be something tragic, like Malala, who was shot in the head for going to school, because she's a girl. The Jude, who was a child bride and got herself divorced at age 10, with all... <laughs> To much to the disgust of her family, who thinks she should just accept being somebody else's bride at age 10. Oh, please. And Mende, who was ripped from her home in southern Sudan and forced to be a slave to Arabs of northern Sudan until she finally won her freedom. The old-fashioned way, rescued. It could be of a horse. It could be of a nation, such as Stephen Swig's oh, The World of Yesterday, where the Hitler erased what was a thriving society, all for his lust for power. We have seen that recently, haven't we? The Making of a Philosopher by Colin McGuinn. Stealing God's thunder. <laughs> what could that possibly about be about except Benjamin Franklin inventing the lightning rod? But of course, nobody knows about that, mind you, because, uh, well, the preachers didn't like it. Trying to avoid the wrath of God, you know. Pip, pip. However, what doesn't make a good biography is Born with Teeth. Now, surprisingly, it was about Diane Keaton. You would think that would have been a great biography. Well, not so much, surprisingly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very odd. It, it doesn't so much matter who apparently it's about. I mean, the American presidents could be about Angelica Houston, which was titled Watch Me, Lucrezia Borga, Ethan Allen, Ew. I am here Sinali with Infidel Nomad, or how about Yang Ursh Namu? with leaving Mother Lake. Could be about anybody. But some are admittedly better than others. Now, it helps if you have a charismatic person that you're writing about, such as Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, but Janice Zupan wrote My Path to Freedom. Who the hell was he? Nobody knows. But he writes a very good short biography about how he got out 
and from from escaped both Hitler and the communists and ended up in the United States, how he got out. And then, of course, we have the wartime biographies. You know, no cloak, no dagger, for example. Silk. Man in the Shadows. Part of an ongoing war, that one. But still, what makes a good biography? A compelling story. But what is a compelling story? I mean, the Paxton letters. You know? Of course, it's all British understatements, so yes. But then you have uh, very quiet biographies about nobody in particular, and yet it's fascinating. The Diary of an Edwardian Lady. Good heavens. I don't know how many that one sold. Good. It was great. But it was quiet. Peaceful. Nothing untoward happened. So I'm asking, what makes a good biography? A story where nothing happens? A story where everything happens? A happy story? A sad story? It just seems to be a story you want to read. However that it, how it comes out, it's still a story that you want to read. Even if it's about a nobody, about nothing in particular. Just a quiet life in an English country village, perhaps. It has an interest of its own, of a certain kind. Or the tragedy of slavery, stolen innocence, how fundamentalists in the United States warp and harm their children. Oh, come on. There seems to be no end to stories that people want to read. So if you have a biography, no matter how dull you think you got it, write it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please come again.